<gasps> oh, it's finally here! AMD's 300 series lineup of video cards! Hybrid liquid cooling and performance that competes with the Titan X? Oh, oh, excuse me. Hello? Whoa, whoa, what? This isn't that? Oh, come on, there's no way that AMD would just refresh an existing series but name it something different. Oh, but these are faster than previously, and they cost around the same. Oh, all right. There's no one there. I, I, I gotta stop doing that. When MSI asked Anthony if he wanted to review the new AMD series graphics cards, he was ecstatic. After all, Nvidia has been in the spotlight for a while now, so it's about time AMD stepped up to the plate. In front of us, we have the new MSI Radeon R9 390X, R9 380, and R7 370. Those names sound familiar? Well, unfortunately, this isn't the badass Fury flagship chipset that everyone has been waiting for. Like the names imply, these are the slightly refreshed versions for 2015. The big story here is that these cards will have native support for full DirectX 12 compatibility. Most existing high-end cards will also support DirectX 12, but Microsoft claims you'll need a new card like the 300 series or the NVIDIA GTX 900 series for full benefits. Let's start with the R9 390X. It's got MSI's latest twin frozer cooler on top with four massive heat pipes. This one is thicker than normal and will take up two and a half slots in total, so keep that in mind if you're using it in an ITX case or Crossfire. They've also updated the backplate design with a pretty matte and glossy dragon design that's actually pretty badass. The other two cards, the 380 and 370, feature twin frozer coolers that just take up two slots total. The 380 comes with a three heat pipe design and a backplate as well, while the 370 only has two heat pipes and does not come with a backplate. All three cards have the same outputs as the current lineup, one DisplayPort, one HDMI, and two DVI. Let's take a look at performance. Specifications for the 390X compared to the 290X are essentially identical. Our MSI version comes factory overclocked, but reference design 390Xs will have the same clock speed, memory clock, shaders, ROP units, and TMU units. The big change is the jump up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, which should help users who are gaming at 4K. As a result, your memory bandwidth also jumps up from 320 to 390 gigabits a second. Next up is the R9 380. This one is slightly more confusing as it doesn't actually succeed the R9 280X. Instead, it's a refresh of the R9 285 at a slightly lower price point. Again, when comparing reference non-OC designs, you have the same clock speed, memory clock, video RAM, memory bandwidth, shaders, ROP units, and TMU units. The R9 285 already supported DX12, so I guess its only purpose is to leave room for a potential R9 380X in the future. And finally, we have the R7 370. Now, again, this is actually not a refresh of the R9 270X. It's a pretty close refresh of the R7 265. If you look at the chart, you'll see that everything's pretty much the same when you compare the reference designs. We can see the similarities between the two gens by looking at the performance. The R9 380 and the R9 285 are very similar, while the R7 370 and R7 265 are again very similar. The only real significant difference is between the 390X and the 290X, which made Anthony quite disappointed, but pleased at the same time since he only had to benchmark one new card. In Firestrike Extreme, we're seeing an increase in score of about 16%. In Firestrike Ultra, which runs at 4K, the difference is only 13%. Now, for all intents and purposes, these cards perform about the same when you use less than 4 gigabytes of VRAM. The variation is most likely due to the factory overclock on the MSI 390X, which happens to be around 10% higher than reference. 1100 megahertz versus a thousand megahertz. Finally, Anthony tested both cards in GTA 5 to stress the VRAM. He did two trials, one with most settings on high, which took up around 3.5 gigs of VRAM, and one with most settings on ultra, which took up around 6 gigs of VRAM. As you can see, there is a clear advantage for the 390X as soon as your game uses up more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. When the game uses less than that, the differences could really be attributed to random variances and the slightly higher clock speeds of the factory overclock by MSI. So there you have it. If you want a game at 4K, then two 390Xs are a pretty good bang for your buck, and you can click here for all the pricing information. If you're waiting for the Titan X killer, then you'll unfortunately have to keep waiting, although the Fury X is coming out soon, and it looks like the performance is going to be pretty close to the Titan X for around half the price, so keep your eyes peeled for that. If you are building a new PC or upgrading your current graphics card right now, then you'll also want to keep an eye out for clearance-priced R9 285s or R7 265s. And hopefully AMD adds some additional cards like the 380X or 370X in the future.
That's pretty much it for this video, guys. As always, links for all this stuff is in the description below. Leave a comment on what you think about AMD's 300 series lineup refresh. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.